Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In today's episode I will be building a WSUS server that will be used to patch all of the Windows servers on the network. This episode is part of my series on building an enterprise network. If you're new to the channel please remember to subscribe and if you like this video please click the like button. What we're going to do first is deploy our WSUS server off of our template. We're going to call this HQWSUS WSUS, which stands for Windows Server Update Service or Update Services. Um, click next. Click next. Uh, I am actually going to customize the operating system and power it on once it's done. Uh, we're going to click our, our um, template that we created and we're going to call this HQWSUS, click next and finish. So I am going to speed up the footage and come back once this is complete. The server has been deployed and now I'm going to make a couple of tweaks. Um, this is going to need at least four processors. Uh, I'm going to set this to, do this to eight. Uh, and then I'm going to add in a disk for the updates. I'm going to set this at 100 gigs initially and then set this to then provision. And that's it. All right, so I'm going to power this back on. So I'm going to set this to 5181, uh, 255, 255, 255 for the subnet mask, 10.0.51.1 for the gateway, 10.0.31.11, 10.0.31.12 for the DNS servers, click OK, click OK. Do a DP update. Okay, so I'm going to close this and log in here. HQWSUS.setNetwork.org. Okay, so we have our server. Let's configure the disks. The uh, disk I added. I'm going to bring it online. We're going to uh, initialize the disk. And then I'm going to do a simple volume, full space, drive E, and get rid of the label. Server, um, 
server manager. All right, so I'm going to add in a role. server update services and click next click next next uh, normally I would use uh, SQL server but uh, for this network and the size uh, I'm just gonna do the Windows database uh, click next So what I'm going to do is open up the E drive and I'm just going to call this updates. But there is a step uh, updates and just cut that into here. So um, there is a step that I need to complete uh, before I can complete the, the step. Um, actually, I'm going to put it up here. So, this is going to be HQWSUS patch management. Alright, this is not going to be a universal rule. Uh, so, this is going to be from <coughs> The server VLAN. Uh, let's create a new address. HQWSUS.sec. Network. Org. Ten zero fifty one eighty one. Destination is going to be to the WAN. Now, this will be web browsing. SSL. And MS updates, I believe. Uh, that's it for now. We'll do the. Uh, so, um, so later on, uh, what I will do is um, do some URL filtering to limit um, what this server can access on the internet. Um, but I'll get into that in a later video. So for now, we have this rule that allows it out to the internet. And what I'll also do since I'm here is drop down to here. Um, I'll put this here. So we're going to add in segment HQ WSUS patch management. And what we'll do is this is from AAA DMZ management. Security server and user uh, will be able to get to the server and uh, sorry, this needs to be. HQ, the entire HQ network, and then they will be getting to the server. Actually, I'm going to remove it from here. Get out of there. Uh, so, segment serve uh, will be our WSUS server. Application will be. 
Actually, I'm not sure. Let me do some. application Let's see if there's a rule in here for w sauce there's not it's probably a million updates uh, let me check the ms update ms dash update and see if this includes w sauce Looks like it might just well looks like it might so let's do this let's jump back over and let's find our rule and I will do uh, MS updates No need for SSL because I'm not doing SSL yet. Uh, let's commit that. And I will be back once the commit is complete. All right, so we have gotten back and let's see so it says that SSL is a required rule so I'll add it in and that'll make that go away so for now uh, we don't have to wait for this commit Let's jump back over to the server, click next, and next. Uh, let me go through this real quick. I don't think there's going to be anything else I need to add. Yep, all right, so next, and install. And I shall return once this is complete. All right, so the install process is complete. Next up, we're going to launch the post steps. Uh, the post deployment configuration. So I'm trying to keep an eye on the CPU um, because WSS um, can be a CPU killer for sure. Uh, and what I might do is rearrange how I have the sockets and yeah, so right there. Uh, sockets and uh, virtual CPUs um, assigned to this VM. Since on the hypervisor, we aren't using, uh, well, we are now, uh, but we weren't using very much CPU. But it looks like this system is all right let's make sure this is still all right so now that that's done let's go into here let's close that Okay, so now um, we're going to step through the configuration. I'm not going to join the improvement program. 
Uh, we're going to get our updates straight from Microsoft. Uh, we're not going to use a proxy. And we're going to start the connection. And I will be back once this is complete. Actually, um, I want to take a look at the firewall and make sure that nothing that is required is being blocked. So we're going to create a filter on serve 81 to LAN. And we're going to change 90 to 81. So we are getting some update issues. So this is hitting the wrong rule. It's hitting the activation rule and it shouldn't be. All right, I'm going to let this go and keep checking on it periodically. Okay, so it looks like this finally completed. So we're going to click next. Okay. We want English. And that's it. So next. And I'm going to go through this. Uh, at some point, I might play around with rights management. So I'll add that. Go down this list. this uh, I'll add bit locker The 365 client 19 uh, and 16. I'm not quite sure what version I'm going to run yet. Uh, no Skype. Uh, Silverlight will add. At some point, I will probably run SQL. So let's add in 14 to 16 and that. And then the management, which will probably run the latest management. Uh, actually, we'll run 19 and not these. I uh, will still leave the feature pack. Uh, but <clears throat> so I'm going to run 19 at some point with the latest studio um, server management studio. Um, and I'll add the feature pack in. Uh, I might deploy S. I might deploy SCCM in the future, but we'll leave that alone for now. Defender's fine. Let's just use the keyboard. That's fine. We'll do that. Uh, no surface. Uh, we'll do Windows 10 servicing. Uh, none of the anniversaries and creators. Not 
see LTSB. Um, I'm not sure what version of 10 I'm gonna run, so I'll probably do all of these. And 10. None of these. And the environment only consists of 19. So we'll add 19. And that's it. Uh, I might do a second pass at a later date, but that's it for now. Okay, so we're not gonna do any drivers. We're not gonna do any feature pack. Um, I'm gonna do updates. Uh, no service packs. So we'll leave it like that. Uh, we'll synchronize manually and I will begin. Actually, I will click next. I'm going to finish that on the next page. All right, so let's expand this down. Let's go to options. And let me do some poking around here. Uh, so that's fine. Somewhere in here, maybe it's IIS. Take a look here. Um, you get to specify the ports. All right, so let me take a look at this. So it definitely looks like, yep, it's gonna be on the non-standard ports. So we're looking for 53, 85.30, I think is what that says. 85.30, so I'm just gonna put that in a notepad. Oh, maybe not, 85.30. Okay, so now that that is known, uh, I can close this and I want to Start the initial sync. Actually, let me look at the sync schedule. So we're gonna automatically sync. Um, cancel that. Uh, let me go ahead and kick off the synchronization now. a look at the performance while this runs. Uh, and I will do want to take another look. Alright, so nothing has nothing recently has been denied, so that's a good it's good. fine right now at least okay so I'm gonna let this thing do its thing um, I should be good to close this um, 8530 I gotta remember 8530 so I'm gonna log off of this server and let it run now I'm going to jump over to the domain controller. All right, so what I am going to do here is take a look at the group policies and see so 
So I might put this in the mandatory policy. Let me just edit this. Take a look. So we're going to go down to Windows Updates. Specify um, update location. And then it's going to be HTTP, HQ, WSUS dot sec network.org um, port uh, 85.30 and that goes in both places uh, apply and ok so what I want to do after running a quick GP update is run RSOT report. And I want to take a look at the same policies and see if there were any um, policies that have been defined. So right now the only policy that's defined is in the mandatory policy. So let me close out of that. Um, so what I'm gonna do I'm not gonna do it in this policy, but I will do it in subsequent um, lower tiered policies is make um, changes for automatic updates. So I don't have to go to every server and update manually. So, but at least for now, um, all the servers can start to check in and we can start to hopefully see some uh, patches go through. So we're done on this server. So what I'm going to do is let this server run and get its updates and patches and then um, let the clients check in. Um, so I will start recording in probably the next day or so. Hello YouTube, welcome back. It's been about one second for you, but it's been about two or three weeks for me since I started this video on deploying a WSUS server. Uh, I did do some checking on it uh, at least a week ago, and it seemed to be working pretty well. But let's jump into the server and take a look. All right, so this is the HQ admin server, and I've brought up the uh, WSUS console. Uh, I just completed a synchronization, and what I am going to do is jump down to computers. And as you can see, um, I have four computers that show up in the list. Um, we have HQ admin, the two domain controllers, and our WSUS server. Um, and they all have a few patches that are required. Um, this one, uh, the HQ admin server requires six. Um, so, what I want to do is go into all updates and pick one or two. Um, that we can push right now. In fact, what I'll do 
select all and approve these. And later on, probably offline, I'll set this up um, where I'll put different uh, groups in place so that I can test the uh, patches before I push them out. But as you can see, we apply these patches. They're downloading right now. All right, so as you can see, we're making some progress. Um, we only need five. It's already downloaded one. I'm gonna keep refreshing this. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to jump to when this is finished. So the patches have come down successfully. So what I'm going to do is um, try and force a, the server to check in, pull down patches. So we're going to check for updates. Okay, so as we can see, um, the patches that I pushed are um, coming down and are successfully installing. So I will um, let this complete. So our updates have finished. So I am going to go ahead and reboot. Uh, while that is rebooting, I do want to mention that I came across this article on how to force uh, WSS clients to check in. Um, and I ran this command uh, along with this command. Um, and I was able to get a so I was able to get the um, clients to check in successfully and post accurate uh, information as to what updates were missing and needed. So I'm gonna post the link to this website in the description um, so that you can check it out. All right, so the server is back up. And what I'm going to do is start up a PowerShell start up PowerShell as a admin and I'm going to run the command real quick it might take a, a few minutes so I'm gonna let that run all right so that command is complete so I'm gonna run And then so I'm going to run these commands, and what should happen is the client should check back in with the WSS server. And what I want to know is how many patches client still is reporting so it's reporting nine patches missing of course i don't uh, so at some point i will be installing the microsoft Re report viewer so what i want to do is um show a change that i made on the microsoft activation uh firewall rule so the issue before with this rule was other servers on the network would be hitting um, the SSL and the web browsing uh, security rules because there was nothing else preventing this from going out. There was nothing preventing um, web traffic from uh, filtering out um illegitimate traffic so what i did was i created a url category called windows activation and that is an object 
over here. And within this object, I specified all the domains that are authorized um, through this rule. So that way, nothing uh, except for legitimate um, product activation will be allowed to, to go through this rule. Uh, I will probably be doing the same thing for the um, patch management rule creating a URL category for it. Um, and I'll, I'm gonna make that change offline um, and make sure that the um, WSUS server doesn't have uh, unfeathered internet access, um, but is limited to, um, uh, limited to what it, uh, only what it needs, nothing more. So this is going to be the end of today's video on deploying a WSUS server. And again, this video is a part of my series on building an enterprise network. So if you enjoyed this content, please subscribe. And, uh, and if you liked the video, please do hit the like button and help us beat the YouTube algorithm. If you have any questions or comments, please do leave them in the comment section below and I will get back to you.